Hello everyone. In today's film, I'm going to be creating a summer inspired look and I have not created a tutorial in quite some time. So I'm feeling awfully excited and tutorous today. In today's film, I want to use as many new products as I can. I want to sort of deviate away slightly from using my go-to products. There are so many brands launching. There are so many products coming out. It can be quite difficult to keep up as there are so many products being launched by so many different brands. And the amount of new brands that there are that were not here around about five years ago. If we continue at this rate, Jesus, Mary and all the blessing saints will have a palette out next year. As this is a summertime inspired tutorial, I want to use products that are softer in the makeup. I have often found that heavy, heavy makeup during summertime can be a little impractical as the season can be so hot and so humid depending on where you are in the world. Of course, I am very much aware that I have viewers in parts of the world that do not have the same seasonal patterns as we do here in Europe. Generally, I find that bright colors, the neons, the pinks, the yellows, pastels, a lot of these colors can be really associated with summertime. However, the thing that I find most inspiring about summertime is the early, early morning sunrises and the late, late sunsets. I have always found the sky an endless source of inspiration. It is one of the most fascinating, most seamless creations I have ever seen. You will never see any human intervention, whether it is blended eyeshadow, whether it is a painting, whether it is Photoshop, that is as perfectly seamless and gradiated as the sky. Just the way the colors go from dark to light. It's truly fascinating. And just to think that it is a collection of chemicals held by gravity to create an atmosphere. And we of course perceive it depending on what angle the sunlight is upon it. And I always feel very happy to perceive a sunset. I have for a long time considered sunsets one of the most beautiful things in creation, in my opinion, seldom humble. Certainly here in England, one of the colors that I tend to find very representative of summer, and you see it during the morning, during the daytime, and in the evening. You see it in nature. Of course, all the plants come alive in spring and summertime. Yellow is a color I often associate with summer. Of course, the sunlight is very yellow. It's very bright. Yellow is one of those colors I think that it requires a little bit of understanding to work with. It's such a garish color, but if it is applied correctly and done as a hue, I think it can look really, really great. Of course, if you want to go for bright yellow foundation or lips or eyes or whatever you like, that's totally up to you. I have often thought, go for whatever color you want, just make sure that your application is done really well and you'll be able to pull off absolutely anything. Yellow certainly accompanied with orange or brown and even black to a degree can really contrast against blue eyes, against green eyes and to a degree brown eyes, but it certainly contrasts the most against blue eyes as the tones are completely different, as these two colors are quite polarized. Of course, it is currently summertime here in England. It is extremely hot and my studio is without air conditioning. So I am combusting at a rate of knots. And if I continue to roast as I am doing here, we might be able to serve John McLean for the six o'clock dinner, redefining the Big Mac. But besides from the very hot weather, there are lots of lovely things to do here in England, like going off to France. Aside from England, Britain as an entirety has so many glorious things to see. There are so many wonderful national treasures, myself being one of them. Frivolity aside, I'd like to continue on with the look. Of course, I have already gone in and I have applied moisturizer, foundation, color corrector, concealer, setting powder, and eyebrows. I first of all went in and cleared the epidermis with a cotton pad using some of the Lovecraft Beauty Micellar or Micellar, however you like to pronounce it, water. Lovecraft Beauty was founded by an incredibly talented makeup artist, Francelle Daly, who very kindly sent me some of her products and we have one of them here today. And I have been absolutely in love with this product. Of course, its packaging is uniform, it's slick, it's very non-nonsense, yet it remains elegant. And I just go over the skin very lightly with a little bit of this just to remove any excess sebum or any particles that I may not want to be there. And it has the most lovely smell, almost a little bit like orange cordial. I often tend to gravitate describing scents to drinks. I must seem like such an alcoholic. Then I went in and I liberally applied some of the Hydroderm Facial Cream by Sesterma all over my face. I really applied quite a good bit of it. I typically go for Embry Release La Creme Concentrate as a moisturizer and under makeup. However, if you want something a little lighter, 
I definitely recommend this. For foundation, I went in with some of Kat Von D's Locket Foundation in the shade Light 41 Neutral. To conceal and purge any visible discoloration from the beholder, I took some of Krylon's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D707. Typically, I use the D1W, but today I went for the D707, and this is what its refill packaging looks like. I typically present this to you all in a decanted format, typically placed within my MAC Cosmetics palette where I can store many different concealers in different colors. For additional coverage and brightening, I went in with some of Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer in the shade C1. So the C1 is great just to brighten any areas that require a little bit of brightening. To set that all through, I went in with some of Inglot's Mattifying Loose Powder in the shade Translucent. For brows, I began by sculpting in the shade first of all, using some of Krylon's Derma Cream Concealer in the shade D40. Then drew in and feathered in individual hairs with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega, accompanied by some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. I have decided to use some eyeshadows from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I should probably use one or two colors from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam palette. And I am also keen to use several of the colors from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Alyssa Edwards palette. I've of course gone for quite a subtle base today. I don't want to go for something that's really high coverage and I want to keep the look as simple as I possibly can, but add a tiny bit of yellow, just a hue through the eyes, just to add a real essence of summer. So I'm first of all going to go in with a clean Zova 228 brush to bare eyelids and just buff over the eyelids, just to ensure that there is no foundation or foundation in my eye folds. Now I'm going to go in and take this color right here, which is called Tempera from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. And I am applying quite a strong amount of that to the eyelid as our base color, employing the use of a MAC Cosmetics 227 brush to do so. And as you can see, it is a color not that far off from my own natural skin tone. It's just slightly more peachy. Then I'm going to go back in with a Zova 228 brush from before and just softly blend through all of that just to ensure seamlessness. Applying a color that is relatively near to your own natural skin tone, even though it seems as if though it does nothing, it provides you with an even base, and secondly, it provides you a base for your transition color, so that all your colors just blend very seamlessly together. Then I'm applying some of that tempera color just to the underneath, applying it with a Charles Fox 8146031 brush. Going back into our Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette, I'm going to be taking this beautiful soft orangey color called Orange Soda, and I'm only going to take a little bit of that and apply it through the socket festival just as a crease and sculpting transition color. And I am applying it with the Zova 227 brush. I'm going to take the side of the brush and at the outer corner, place it onto the lid and almost sweep it across the eyelid, just so that we have the color through the socket and the crease, but I want to take it onto the eyelid. I'm just winging it out ever so slightly, not in any particular style, just to uplift the eye. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that orange soda color on a backstage precision pencil brush, just onto the underneath, not too far. I'm going back in with our Zova 227 from before and just blending those edges. And then going back in with our Zova 228 brush from before, which still has a slight remainder of the tempera color on it, just buffing through everything, just to ensure seamlessness. And as you can see, this orange soda color has really contrasted very well with my blue eyes. Now I'm going to go in and apply this color right here, which is a slightly deeper version of the orange soda color. And this is the color The Supreme from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Alyssa Edwards palette. Slightly bloody orange color this. And once applied against the orange soda color, it does look slightly more pinky slightly more ready, and I'm only going to take a tiny bit of this through the crease, doing so with a clean MAC 217, just to add a little bit of richness to the color. I'm just going back in with our Zoba 228 brush, just to diminutify the severity of the color ever so slightly. Going back into our Anastasia Beverly Hills Alyssa Edwards palette, I'm going to be taking this bright yellow right here, it's a very bright chrome yellow, and it is the shade Brick Road. It's a very concentrated color, so I'm not going to apply too much at once, and I'm going to be applying it on an Anastasia Beverly Hills A24 brush, just packing it onto the eyelid first of all. And as you can see, that already looks quite severe, and I've applied barely any of it. So I'm going to just leave it at that. Two very faint layers is all I have done, and duplicating the same procedure on the left eye. When using yellow, certainly against orange, 
One can sometimes presume that it will blend seamlessly. However, sometimes it can look a little bit lime green, depending on what colors you accompany it with. Just to soften the edges of where I've applied the brick road color, I'm going to go back in with our Zoba 227 brush from before, which we used to apply the orange solder color, and just merge the two together. And this will just reduce the severity of the brick road color. And now I'm going to go back into our Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. And I shall be taking this beautiful color right here in the shade Rustic. And I'm just applying it to the upper lash line first of all. In light patting motions using our Charles Fox 8146031 brush from before. I'm just smudging the upper lash line. Applying a great concentration of it at the outer corner and slightly into the socket. I'm just winging that rustic color just ever so slightly outward. On a Kitstar's N33 micro pencil brush, and I'm taking it slightly down onto the underneath of the eye. Not too much though. And then going back in and softening everything through with our MAC 217. Even though I have done it in quite an elongating cat-like shape, just to give us the right amount of lift, I don't want it to be a severe shape by any mean. And then I'm just smudging a little bit more of that rustic color on the underneath of the eye just to give us additional definition. When applying this look, you may find that you have disturbed some of your eyelid color. So I'm going to go back in with my A24 brush with some of that brick road color, just to add a little bit more of that yellow. And then just softening over everything with a Zoba 228 brush. To finalize the eyes, I'm going to go in and curl the eyelashes. And I shall be employing the use of some of MAC Cosmetics eyelash curlers, giving the eyelashes a very thorough curl. For mascara, I'm going to be using using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara and applying a really liberal amount of that to the eyelashes. And you may find that once your mascara is applied, you might have to go back in and apply additional color to your socket just to lift the eye further. Because sometimes when I apply mascara and you look forward, once you have finished the eyelashes, they can sometimes overlap or overtake the look. So I always consider it important to retain balance. And to do so, you sometimes have to just go back in and softly blend, even if it's just a hue of color, it can really subtly prevent the eyelashes from being so harsh against the rest of the look or overtaking it. It just gradiates it slightly. Now for cheeks, I've decided to keep the look accessible and I'm going to go in with an Anastasia Beverly Hills powder bronzer in the shade Rosewood. As this is quite a cool tone, as you will be able to perceive, I will be able to use this to contour. And I'm just applying a subtle amount of it, first of all, on a Stilazzi blush brush, keeping it quite high. And very, very soft, light movements across the skin. And just moving it back and forth. So you apply the most of the color to the area that you want to create the definition, but then to ensure seamlessness by going over it with the remaining amount of product very, very lightly, so there's hardly any product on the brush. By doing this, it just softens it all. Now, I'm not going to apply more than that, even though it looks quite strong as it is, and duplicating the same procedure on the left cheekbone. Now, I'm going to go in with an additional Anastasia Beverly Hills product and use the Blush Trio. This is the Pool Party palette, and I'm going to use the shade right here, which is the shade Blank, and I'm applying a tiny bit of that blank color quite high, first of all. Not too much of it, just a very subtle amount of it. Very high on the cheek. Very similar color to Blush Baby by MAC Cosmetics. Now this blusher looks quite soft in person. However, on camera, it certainly appears quite severe. So just to soften everything back down and just brighten it ever so slightly, I shall be taking some of MAC Cosmetics powder foundation in the shade Shivering White. And I'm just gliding over it with a MAC 138 brush. And if though you feel as if you have taken too much color off, you can always go back in with your blush brush, which we use to apply our contour and our blusher, and just softly go over everything, which will just take the harshness out of the white powder that we used. As you will be able to perceive, I have gone in and applied a little bit of highlighter. Very sneaky of me. And I'm going to be using yet another Anastasia Beverly Hills product. This is the loose highlighter in the shade Snowflake. And I'm applying that to the high points of the cheekbones and onto the cheek slightly using a Charles Fox 8146015 brush. Tiny bit of it onto the brow. When you apply highlighter to this part of the face, it does tend to make texture appear very prevalent. However, I just think it makes the skin look so healthy. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that into the hollow of the neck. A tiny bit of it at the bridge of the nose just to add light. A 
fragment of it on the chin, a tiny bit of it above the lip, just the slightest amount. Now this highlighter is quite severe, it is definitely very very strong. Now I'm going to be going in with lipstick, but firstly I would like to correct any asymmetry within the lips using some of Charlotte Tilbury's lip cheat in the shade Pillow Talk, applying it just to create the illusion of more symmetrical fuller lips. So I've just gone in and lined the lips with that pillow top colour. Now for lips, Chic Central has striked again. Lisa Eldridge recently launched her summer collection of lipsticks. She launched four superb lipsticks and they all came in this summer bag. Lisa indeed very kindly gifted me her summer collection. Beautiful lipsticks in this collection and I shall definitely leave the applicable links to her website within the description of this film so you may check them out. But today I'm only going to show you one of them. I think a little bit of suspense will do you all good. I'm going to be taking the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Loosened Lip Colour. This is its packaging and this of course is the bullet. Classic Lisa Eldridge packaging and this is the shade Go Light. And I know many of you are probably thinking, wow, that's a really bright colour. However, when you apply it to the lips, as I shall do now, just a light layer of it, it's a very balm-like texture. It's really, really soft and really, really light. And with a Go Lightly colour applied to the lips, I'm now going to go in with a MAC Cosmetics 231 brush and just blend everything through. Blur the lipstick into the lip liner. The colour and the opacity is quite intense, but the formulation is so balm-like that it's very, very easy to sheer out. And I think it's a really light, bright, summery colour. So that more or less completes the look. It is quite a simple look and uses very strong colours. But if you apply bright colours quite subtly, depending on how you apply bright colours, I think they can look really beautiful and vivid without being garish or too much. But I have had a lot of fun in creating this film for you here today. And I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye.